C++ uses a number of libraries designated with a pound include before int main void for special functions and operations for a wide range of capabilities. If you recall in Hello World, we used pound include iostream.h so that we would have the ability for input from the keyboard as well as output to the screen. This is but one of many libraries that we will use in both the intro course and the dual credit course for TigerBytes programming. Another library commonly used will be pound include fstream.h for input from a file or output to a file. We'll also use in this course math.h so we have a full range of higher level math operations to include absolute value, exponents, square root, and all trig functions. We'll also have an occasion to use for more advanced programming time.h which allows us to create time variables tied to the CPU clock which in turn permits the programmer to establish a start or stop time and then determine the time lapse between key program steps. We might want to use this when we're investigating how efficient a particular algorithm is and probably the greatest advantage we have here is being able to compare two algorithms for efficiency. We might use this in our prime number program for those of you that get to the more advanced levels of that requirement. We also have a library called ctype.h. Now when you learn more about variables, you'll learn that character variables are pretty special. We can determine whether or not a character variable is punctuation, a capital or small letter, or a number. We can also do things like changing letters to caps or smalls. It's very useful when we start sorting and comparing information that's in text form. We'll use a lot of string variables not only in C++ but in Java. For many of you who take the intermediate course you'll see some great similarities. But string.h allows us to handle a string, if you will, of characters as a single entity. We can compare strings using logical operators. We can concatenate, which means add two strings together, insert, isolate substrings, and so on. We'll use this library to a great extent in our dual credit course because most database information we have is contained as strings, not simple numerical data. We'll also use in our dual credit course a, a library called a vector, which is a dynamic list or array. It's what we call a templated class, which means we can have a list or array of any type of variable. We can use logical operators and elements, and we can do more complex functions such as resizing, sending the whole vector or list to and from functions as a single item, and we can also assign one to another, in other words, make one vector equal to another as a single item. This we'll use extensively in the dual credit course, but it's an example of a very powerful library that builds in key capabilities to C++. Now, when we start, we're going to go pound include with the library name .h on all the libraries we use. This is a little bit antiquated, but it's a little simpler for newer programmers. Some compilers require that you use something called a namespace standard. The namespace standard, in simplistic terms, basically deconflicts function names between different libraries so that if you have a function in one library that has the same name as a function in another, it won't confuse the two. Some libraries, such as math.h, are not part of a namespace standard. For new programmers, this can be a little bit difficult to remember which is and which isn't part of the namespace. So for our programming in the intro course, we will not use the namespace standard. We'll simply go everything with .h at the end when we include it. On the other hand, in our dual credit course, we will use the namespace so that we can use some more powerful libraries and get used to the concept. You will find that if you don't remember which is or which is not part of the namespace standard, you'll get some fairly recognizable errors and you'll know to go up and fix that particular library, either including it in or not. If you leave out the .h, the program will assume it's part of namespace. 
if you add the dot h, it'll assume it's not. You'll get some kind of errors accordingly if, in fact, you've made a mistake on how you identified a key library. For intro programmers, don't worry about this concept. Simply put dot h with everything and leave out using namespace standard. For dual credit programmers, you'll get used to doing this in pretty short order. We'll cover what each of these library does in more detail on their own presentations later in Tiger Bytes Notes.